And I dare say, this is where I'll actually look at this and say that I believe that Dak is the one that's kind of put them on there. Because you keep hearing the Cowboys saying, oh, yeah, we want to sign Dak. We want to sign Dak and all that. And Dak basically saying, you know, I, I don't have to be the highest paid. And I think this is him saying, what are you going to do for me? Now, the talking heads out there are saying, you know, the Cowboys, they didn't do anything to help Dak. They didn't get him any weapons. But you remember in 2016 when the Giants won uh, two games against the Cowboys? That, you know, they were up and coming. You know, they had Odell Beckham before the knee injuries. They had Sterling Shepard. And in the offseason, they signed Brandon Marshall. And everybody went crazy and said, oh, my God, Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. You've got Brandon Marshall. You've got Sterling Shepard. You've got Odell Beckham Jr. You're not going to be able to stop that team, right? And I said, yeah, they got great weapons, but their offensive line sucks. I said, Eli is not going to be able to do shit with that offensive line. And they were number one in attempts, and they were 19th in yardage and 23 in scoring. It's all about the offensive line. And that's where I think the Cowboys, you know, drafting and getting two really good offensive linemen for the price of one actually is a message to Dak. Dak, we're looking out for you to try and keep you healthy. We're, we'll we'll look at the Eagle draft here in a second, but I wanted to go over the Cowboy draft with you. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you my assessment, and then I'd like for you to follow up on how you looked and how I saw what they did, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'd love that, man. It's your show, okay. man. It's your show. I'm just living in your world, go. bro. All right. First pick, 29th, Tyler Guyton, OT, Oklahoma. I said this about the kid, 6'7", 328. Very athletic kid. Mm-hmm. Reminds me a little bit of Lane Johnson. Mm-hmm. Now, they're looking for him to replace um, Tyron Smith. Here's yes. my problem. He's not a left tackle. He's more, in my opinion, of a run-blocking right tackle. So, to me, it's going to be a little bit more of a learning curve for him. Yes. Being yeah. out there on that spot with the blind side and playing against traditionally the best edge rushers are coming from that angle. Now, with Zach Martin there, that helps him. Oh, it's tremendous. A ton having a guy like that next to him. However, second moves will be an issue. This is this I feel better with him. And by the way, I like the pick. Mm-hmm. It's not it's I'd like the pick, but you're going from a guy who's a little stiffer than Tyron Smith to play that left tackle. You have to be patient over there at that spot, whereas the other side, you could be aggressive, and he's got an aggressive mentality. So I think that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for him at that left tackle spot. All right, let me counter that. At Oklahoma, his quarterback was left-handed. He had to defend the blind side of the quarterback. He had 13 starts at right tackle. He had one start at left tackle. I will give you that. And as uh, Mike McCarthy said, try wiping your ass with your right hand and then try wiping it with your left hand. It's two totally different things. He is very young, very raw. The 14 starts aren't a lot. But having, like you said, having Tyler Smith next to him. And I dare say, this is one of those moves where uh, most Eagle fans have been joking about Zeke Elliott coming back. Zeke Elliott is not going to be the every down back. But the thing that's great about he's Zeke Elliott, he's a relic, but the dude can block. He can help out on that side. That's, in red zone. Yeah, that's in, in red zone. And so that's where you look at it and say, we got Dak Prescott's friend. You know, he's Dak a little bit here, and he's a guy who does not mind putting his nose up in there and will be able to help out. I think it was actually a good move. To be able to move back and to get that extra pick was huge. Here's here's what I say to that when you say the left-hand quarterback. Still, when you're on the right side, when Everything's you're on the left reversed. side, and when you – I get it. You're still dropping – you're still dropping a different foot. Yes. When you're when, when you're preparing, okay? I hand everything is opposite now. Everything my is punch in is reverse. with my left hand instead of my right hand. I get it. That Mark, first step is a great is observation that I hadn't thought of before. And on top of that, it, there's a reason why you don't have uh left handed quarterbacks as your backup quarterbacks in the league because it screws them you up. would have to flip mm-hmm. the entire mm-hmm. offense for yep. a guy, and that's why you don't see a lot of left hand quarterbacks. It's a great observation. So that that does play into it. Hey, by the way, 
When I and I and I said this, I, I thought there would have been ten offensive linemen drafted. There were nine. nine. It was incredible. There were so many good ones. Guys went so later in the draft, like this this uh, this Keegan kid. We'll talk later on about him. I think he's the steal of the draft for the Eagles. I love the kid. Thirty-seven mm-hmm. starts, captain of a national title team. I mean, we'll we'll get to the Eagles here, but that's a good observation. Let me get to the second guy now. <laughs> second round, fifty-sixth pick. Um. Marshawn Nealon. Nealon, is that right? Edge, mm-hmm. Western Michigan, 6'3", 237. Now, here's my takeaway from what the guys at Bledsoe and what Dan Morgan, the uh, general manager of the Panthers, said about him. He's a little undersized. He's a damn good run stopper. He's shockingly for him being 237. Um, 267. Cowboys need pass rushers. However, their big deficiency in that front seven is stopping the run. Yes. So to me, they got him more on the fact that they're hoping to develop him into being more of a pass rusher, but they got him mainly because they think he's going to be helping in the run stop game where they need to help the most. Well, actually, this is one I think this pick is more for the future than it is right now. Because when you look at him, he's more like DeMar- uh, like D-Law, Demarcus Lawrence. And Demarcus Lawrence, this is basically the last year of his contract. He's getting older in the tooth, but they're very similar in his game. He is a really good run stopper. He's actually 267, 6'3", 267. And um, I think he'll be part of the rotation. You know, the Cowboys, one of the things we did last year, and everybody is going through, we lost Dorrance Armstrong and we lost uh, Dante Fowler. Um, We keep a rotation of the guys, and he'll be definitely one of those rotations. And you have to look at this from the standpoint of the Cowboys had two big problems when it came to playoffs, running the football and stopping the run. We haven't done anything to stop to to run better as far as running backs, but we've done that on the offensive line. And we got some players that will help out with that run stopping. This is my favorite pick of the Cowboy draft. (laughs) Third round, 73rd pick, Cooper Beebe, um, guard center. Mostly he's going to play center. Juggernaut. Um, I vote on the I vote on the All-American teams every year. And on the top 25, I voted him two years in a row. First team All-American, and he was. He's two-time Big 12 lineman of the year. 6'3", 222. In my opinion, you lose a center. Um, I watched the kid play, and if you watch him, now, see, you got to remember something about linemen, like I said. Mm-hmm. You know, the top guys like Fuaga had a 93 rating. Well, a kid like this had a 91 rating. That's how close all these guys were. Yeah. So you're kind of – it's kind of like your favorite dessert, Mark. So to me, I love this pick here, and it would not shock me if this kid turns out to be uh, one of the better players that they've drafted over the last three, four years. I, I, you know, th- here's the thing that's actually amazing, okay? The, the Cowboys, we get more shit than anything. We don't do crap in free agency and stuff. But for the most part, you look at things that we do. To actually have moved back to get the pick to get this guy is unbelievable. Um, you think about his size. He's six foot three. I'm glad he's not too tall because at center, it's the low man that wins. Too many times with Biotish, Biotish, especially, and this is where I think this is against you guys, because you've got the big guys with Jordan Davis in the middle. Typically, Biotish, when he had a big guy in the middle, he'd just get pushed all the way back into Dak Prescott's lap. Cooper Beebe, I, I think of him like Juggernaut. You know, if you've seen the Marvel character, you know, his head is kind of in between his shoulders. It's like he's got no neck. He is physical, he is mean, and he's there to crack some skulls. I think that this may be... Uh, one, like you said, one of the best moves the Cowboys have done in a long time. The other third rounder, Maris Linfro. Is mm-hmm. that how you say his name? Yeah. Notre Dame. Um, the kid's going to help in run defense. Boom. I watched him. I watched him at Notre Dame last year, and Al uh, Golden was the uh, defensive coordinator of that thing. And it seemed to me that, again, a couple false, does a lot of false steps in there a little bit, but he's aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really think Notre Dame's defense was exceptional last year. I think it got no. better towards the end of the year. That team got better towards the end of the year. And I think he got better towards the end of the year. So, I mean, I think they, a lot of the guys that they signed on defense 
and drafted on defense were helped the run game. Yeah, definitely. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more on the interior defensive line, but we do have a guy in the end, as we'll get to later on, that I think actually could be helpful. Um, no fourth round pick. This kid Carson. Um, Kalian Carson? Yeah. Cornerback, Wake Forest. Um, this is what Mario Cristobal said about him. Great athlete. Tremendous tackler. And somebody that can shock you and maybe see some playing time in that secondary. Um, help you a lot on special teams. But um, they're talking here again where this guy here could maybe be a depth guy there in that corner Most position definitely. now that you get Diggs back. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not discounting that Stefan Gilmore might be brought back into the fold. I think part of the deal with Stefan Gilmore is he had the shoulder surgery. I think they're waiting to see how all of that stuff works out and so on. You know, you've heard rumors that he might go back to New England or he might go back uh, to Carolina. I don't necessarily see him wanting to finish up his career with teams that are in that position. So don't be surprised if he comes back. But Carson, his nickname was Seatbelt because his coverage was literally like a seatbelt wrapped around you. He is actually a lot better than I think a lot of people uh, will think. Uh, will, will, will give him credit for. I don't look for him to be a guy that's going to be plugged in as a starter. But working with Al Harris, Al Harris has done some phenomenal work uh, with the Cowboys secondary players, and um, I think eventually that guy might be a head coach. Well, help me out on this sixth pick here, Ryan F F F Florino uh, from Southwest Mississippi Valley State, Eagle Creek University, Helen Keller University, wide receiver. <laughs> I mean, I don't get yeah. this one here, but okay. I can't what body. Is... Depth. Yeah, Depth? You... Yeah. Uh, well, you know... it's not going to be that hard not to make the Cowboys wide receiver group after CD. Yeah, but I don't think the Cowboys are done right there. Um, here's where I look at it and say, you know, the Cowboys are now beginning to sign some guys. We're, we're talking about bottom feeders right now, you know, getting Zeke back in the fold and stuff like that, uh, bringing back Damian Wilson and stuff. But, see, the Cowboys have those extra comp picks for next year. We got the three fives and a six, it looks like, that are coming through. It would not surprise me to see the Cowboys use – uh, a fifth or sixth round and try and make a trade for a running back as well as another possible weapon or maybe even a fourth round pick. Um, I think the Cowboys have been playing possum or rope-a-dope, so to speak, and now they're trying to hurry up and get this thing put together. You know, they don't like to spend a whole lot of money the way Stephen Jones looked for that, that. And you can ask Stephen is if I get a guy that first week or two and I've spent $12 million for him, I might be able to get three or four guys – in that second wave because you know now teams you know they got a guy they didn't expect so now you're going to start to see some veterans that have been pretty good and more times than not the cowboys have actually done some pretty good things with some of the veterans later on filling in the roster the thing that kills me is uh, this is not a knock actually it is a knocking you damn eagles where are you eagle fans man it's crazy that you guys are coming around and acting like you just won the Super Bowl or something. It's like, did y'all forget that y'all crashed and burned after the season? Because last I thought, we were all kind of in the same boat. We lost the first weekend of the playoffs. Always remember this, though, big fella. Okay. You guys backed <laughs> into the NFC East. The Eagles did implode. Yes. So remember – they played their worst football yes. and still almost won the East. You, yeah, because you had built to rely up the on the Eagles in a nuclear meltdown. But to Dan, win the Dan, East. Dan, you Dan, were never Dan, gonna Dan, win Dan, the Dan, East Dan, 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 Last year, this time, if you and I had been friends and talking on here, we would be having the exact same conversation. The Cowboys suck. They're not doing anything to help themselves. They will not do shit. Nobody expected us to be anywhere. What did they say about your team? Best quarterback in the, in the NFC, Jalen Hurts. Look at that offensive line, the wide receivers, Howie Vision. They're Super Bowl champions. And you crashed and burned. You looked like some ass ass, man. Come on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I, I completely agree with that. But after I watched a guy who has got two starts under his belt and uh, Sammy Love beat yeah. the piss out of you yeah. in your own barn. It happens. And watch you lay it on him it with 19-year-olds. I couldn't believe it. I was watching a the Green Bay Packers who got rid of yep. 
Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Smith. I mean, no, Devontae Adams, a whole shitload of players. Yep. And they took out my old nuns whipping you, board. You know, though. Sister Marjorie Fish's paddle. Unfortunately, and they you. unfortunately, the Green Bay Packers, the San Francisco 49ers are kryptonite. I don't, it, it doesn't, I mean, from the ice bowl on to the catch, no catch. I don't know why the hell we can't do shit against the Green Bay Packers. Okay. They shit on us. They, they, they did. It's I, I can't. Dodgers, now it's Jordan Love? Yeah. And Brett Favre Dude, before that. Your uh, it quarterback just sucks. You, uh, are you talking about quarterback sucking? No, uh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your you're, quarterback's legacy. You know who he is? Oh, He's a, Lordy. Hey. Do you know what he is? He is a white guy version of Kirk Cousins. Ooh. Okay. He's the same I, guy. I tell you what. I tell you what. Look, we'll see where we're looking at the end of the season. Let's see if your quarterback still has a job with the Eagles. Hey, all I know is this. <laughs> right? Kirk Cousins and Dak. What's the difference? Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you one thing. Kirk Cousins has had better wide receivers than Dak Prescott has collectively. You got to start looking at Justin Jefferson. Wait, well, okay, and, well, hey, and all that. but you I'm might just saying, okay. tell your general manager that. Well, it, okay, now you, if you really want to get down to the shit, it's the general manager and your buddy Stephen Jones. The next time you get him on the show for your fifth time, ask him, bro, why aren't you trying to help your quarterback out like Wait, the are Eagles you an do? Apologist for Dak? I'm not an apologist for Dak, but let's keep it real. When San okay. Francisco goes 